Hello, thank you, everyone. I'm very pleased to be able to present uh, my. Uh, so it's part research and it's part our packages I have been developing. I'll try to monitor the chat with my phone on the left side, but not sure who appears. Um, so I've been working on mental health related diagnosis. We have a project on uh, suicide prevention. I did this talk for the lab a few months ago. Um, but for the demo, I wanted to do something more uh, interactive. Um, but so we can first have a look a bit at uh, this presentation to talk, uh, talk about the problematic uh, and about the project. So we're working with the Veterans Affairs hospitals, trying to um, help with uh, suicide prevention for military veterans in particular, also with uh, use uh, uh, related hospitals. And so it's with the CLS laboratory led by Professor Kai. So our idea is to do an app for clinicians, helping them to follow up on at-risk patients. And so enable, in order to be able to do that, we want to discover relationships between clinical concepts. Our data is electronic health records. Uh, we want to do knowledge graphs, basically. Um, a second uh, important thing is to be able to show up the EHR notes that talk about some specific uh, points that the clinicians would like to see. Because one of the challenges they are facing is that patients will have maybe um, interviews every week, and that makes a lot of EHR notes. So they want to be able to have quick access to the ones that are relevant to their specific queries. And also we'd like to be able to share results between hospitals. So uh, while still preserving patient confidentiality. Um, so I'll start a bit with introduction problematization and after we'll go uh, into the uh, the tutorial part with code and so I was showing the GitLab uh, previously but we will come back to it. So I'll try to not take too much time on this but uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders is a very important uh, book for clinicians. It uh, lists all the diagnostic criteria for the different mental disorders. Uh, it, and so it's a very um, base uh, and important uh, document for psychiatrists. An interesting thing, uh, so I tried to look a bit about suicidal ideation in this book um, because it's one of the of, of our main focus to be an, able to understand suicide uh, suicidality. So what we can see that it appears um, throughout the book in many different diseases, in many different sections. For example, in schizophrenia, it's in suicide. There's a section called suicide risk. It also appears in PTSD, panic disorder. It can be a diagnostic criteria for major depressive episode. So it's uh, quite a complex. It's not really a, a diagnosis in itself. It's more a symptom that or a criteria for other for other diagnoses. Um, uh, <clears throat> they in the DSM they talk about the assessment measures. So how they uh, measure when people, for example, psychosis, autism, and they talk a bit about the fact that we need intermediates between the diagnosis that exists. For example, schizoaffective is one that doesn't really fit into any uh, strict uh, definition of the diseases that are present. And they would also like to take into account the variation of features, severity, intensity, combinations of symptoms also for 
for the ones that had the combination. So this is what brings us to try to uh, understand better how we could use multidimensionality to understand better the mental disorders. And also at the end of this first, uh, oh, there's a second section in DSM. The first one is about all these symptoms and diagnostic criteria I was talking about. And the second one is um, possible evolutions of DSM. And suicidal behavior disorder is one that it's a proposed diagnosis for future research. Um, so it may be incorporated in next versions of the DSM. Uh, another um, related uh, diagnosis that is not, is not yet for clinical use, but that is under research, non-suicidal self-injury, which is quite close, but uh, we will see how we will come back to it. But um, the, um, yeah, there is a, a distinguish, uh, a differentiation between uh, suicidal behavior and the suicidal self injury. You know, I talked a bit about how it evolves. For example, PTSD first had three clusters, now there are four. And so some, here are some of the key points. So now we can get back into the tutorial part. So my, this is the repository I prepared. I'm just going to look at the chat if I can, see if, uh, okay, I don't see anything. So this uh, repository, you can clone it if you want. Uh, we will, Here's the abstract I submitted for RMED. I basically have some codes that you can run in your own uh, in your own um, environment. Um, I'm not sure if anyone uses Docker. I know a lot use RStudio. Um, so if you use Docker, you can pull this image I prepared. Otherwise, using uh, this uh, this file, you should be able to install all the packages we uh, we will be using. So I can give you a bit of time to uh, install your local environment if you want. We'll start by exploring a bit Europe PMC. So I'll be showing how we can analyze uh, scientific publications related to suicide. Uh, so I was, as I was saying, our project will be using EHR data, but we also train our NLP algorithms on scientific publications. So once we explored a bit what we can do with EuroPMC, we'll be working with a local database of um, several thousand scientific publications. So I prepared two. There is one. Uh, of 1,700 and one of 8,000. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing on 1,700 uh, to speed things up. But if you want on your side, you can try to reproduce with the 8,000. And so once you prepared your computing environment, um, so maybe, I think I, I thought I, I should be just below. Here's the link to the Dropbox folder. It should look a bit like this. And in here you have some of the files uh, that we will be recreating, but you that you can download uh, to uh, skip some parts if needed. Uh, and one of the important one, if you're not using Docker, would be to download this one, EPMC 1700, and you will need to unzip it. It's uh, 7 z uh, so sorry for that. So let's uh, let's try to see if the demo gods are with us. 
So in my environment, I would use this Docker command, start it up. This is a classic Docker, but we can use this line because it enables us to forward the X session and have the plots. So in the Docker image, we have already all those packages installed. So I was saying I wanted to show a bit first how this came to be uh, using the Europe PMC package. We can do, for example, search in the title, give me say publications that talk about suicidal ideation and their open access. So this is uh, detailed in the vignette of uh, Europe PMC. So if we do this query, we can see 1,400 records found, returning 100. And with this function, Europe PMC, PMC ftext, we can download the full text of the publication. Here I'm doing head on it to just get the six first ones. And so once we have that, we can have a look. This is the XML file, but there is the Honey PMC package that enables you to parse it. So it would look like this. It's a table data frame with the section, paragraph, sentence, and the text. Thank you for sharing the link. Uh, the, okay, let me know if uh, it's a bit too quick. Um, so the file, if you're not using Docker, um, normally, did I, I'll come back to it, is this one, EPMC 1700. So I can wait a bit for you to download it, unzip it. Okay, uh, so apparently you don't have access. Um, try this again. I guess it's the same. Uh, maybe I can quickly put it up on GitLab. Um, that should work. Okay, the link worked. This, uh, so if anyone... The so link worked, works, but it still was showing me that to do anything else after I went to the link, I had to sign in, so... So you can't download? No, I don't have a Dropbox account. I think no one without a Dropbox account would be able to yeah. download if they can't sign in. When so I tried to click it. it to download, it pulled me to sign in. So it should be up on the GitLab repo. You can either clone or maybe download it directly from here.
So they work uh, in the GitLab repo, maybe? So otherwise, we can also move on with uh, this variable of text. Uh, so you only have six publications instead of 1,700, but the, the functions should still work. Is it okay for everyone that we move on? Yeah, it's available for download. Great. So once we have this file, um, this would be the, the command using the Docker. Otherwise you can replace their pass variable by your uh, E, either your local directory where you save the file or just, uh, um, I guess, just let like it's empty string should be okay if uh, it's in your local folder. So this would show up the path of the file. This will take a few minutes. So what I did is that I downloaded all the files from EPMC. We have the FTP address here where you can find all the files uh, because I wanted to be able to parse it locally rather than using Europe PMC. And so I created two databases, one with 20% approximately of the total publications uh, I found. Uh, I was searching for the pattern suicide uh, that could include benonyms of suicide and suicidal. So I extracted each uh, article from XML, built a new XML file. And basically once you have that, you just have to add to uh, these two, this is the uh, prefix string, and this is the append string, like in the first line and the last line, you add to it. And this enables you to use uh, the functions from tidy PMC that this function is calling. So it, it basically recreates a similar XML file as the ones that you can download on uh, the FTP. But this is this time containing only the, the publications relating to suicide. So it shouldn't take more than two, three minutes, I think. So while it's uh, finishing up, we, I can start explaining what we're going to do. So we first want to process the text. We want to sanitize it slightly. Um, but and try to not uh, do it too much because we want to, we're still in the exploration phase, but uh, still enough for it to be fed to the text to vec R package, which is the, the one we're going to use to build the embeddings. Um, so it's uh, word to vec is now a bit old with all the LLMs coming out, but it's still good, uh, a very good benchmark. And it also enables us to train it on our own. Uh, corpus. So I first have a, a function process PubMed that will start by taking out the irrelevant sections. So what I mean for that is that we're going to keep only abstract introduction, methods, results, discussion, and take out things like conflict of interest, uh, data availability statements, So this will be 
the first function will uh, call on our full text. So for example, just to see that everything went well, then some more full text, approximately 1,700. If you look at the first element, it's still the table because it's like the, the raw data. And so once we do the process text, we'll have it in, in a character vector. So this is very fast. So now we have, this is one publication. We also converted everything to lowercase. Uh, I, there were a few LaTeX inter artifacts sometimes like use package. Um, I also removed a few table references or things like that that were sure not to work. But I wanted to keep, for example, some punctuation, for example, here, COVID-19, we have the dash in the middle. So we don't want to remove that. Um, we can see there's also a few things like this that won't be useful, but it's, uh, we don't want to do too much sanitization because we risk taking out important stuff. Um, so this is what our first step looks like. After that, we call so, uh, prune text. So prune text will remove stop words. Uh, we can also use it to stem derivatives. So meaning we'll take out plurals. Uh, but so this takes a bit longer time. Um, so I, in this demo, I'm not showing it. Um, it's also good just for exploration. Um, so it's stemming that I perform myself. Uh, it's quite basic, but um, a bit similarly as uh, the sanitizing previously. Uh, we don't want to do too much because um, it's we, you can quite uh, quickly uh, come up to removing important terms, getting uh, false things. Like if you just want to remove all the S, his would become high. Uh, so this is just an example, but uh, it can affect. So we we want to do it just. So what I'm performing is uh, basically I look. Uh, a minimum number of characters, I think it's four. I look if we already have the singular form. Uh, if we don't, we just keep the plural form. Um, so this is for S and I also do for IES uh, to Y. So I'm not doing it here, but I'm explaining it still because uh, it's something that I use it. Um, <clears throat> that, that I developed and that I use for later that we won't see in the demo, but uh, that I will talk a bit about. So let's, we can wait a bit that it ends to prepare the print text. Um, yeah, I will also remove uh, very rare terms less, that appear less than three times. So after that, we'll be able to call text to vec on it. Uh, this is a function I developed to wrap uh, the, the call to glove to vec There is a, a nice vignette that explains how to do it. Uh, this one will prepare everything to have a projection matrix. Uh, it will, so we will have in rows our terms and in columns, the dimension of the glove embedding we chose. So here uh, I chose 100. And so we'll be computing this after. And here I provided another intermediary file you could try to download. Um, so it's this Dropbox links. And uh, so if you use reget like this, save it as glovefit.rds. You should be able to load it in this. So you can try to do that uh, if you don't want to fit the 
Okay, so the prune text function just returned. Can I have a look? It's a bit hard to tell the difference like this, but you do notice there's a very few small words. There's no more of the, these are the stop words. So it also, yeah. Um, so once we have this, we can call the word, the word to make embedding. And this is a density-based clustering package I developed during my PhD that I used and that we will come back. This is taking a bit longer than I expected. Normally we have, uh, there's 10 iteration, 10 epochs, where the uh, distance is uh, gradually decreasing. Okay, so here we have the first epoch. Would you mind saying what it's doing it again? So it's is it generating um, a vector space or what's it doing? Yes, it's calling word to vec uh, using the text to vec package. And it's building the embedding uh, matrix. So basic approximately 30,000 words in rows and 100 dimensions in columns. Cool, thank you. We can we come back a bit to the, to the presentation. So this is uh, what I'm going to show uh, in, the, in the tutorial, but we can start here with, uh, to have the results on already. So once we have our embeddings, we can query each word. And so here I'm taking the example of EI, so emotional intelligence. So since it's the uh, scientific publications, we have a lot of acronyms. So we can use these uh, EI or any acronym that appears. So here we have the example, the most related term will be gratitude and a lot of emotion and personal traits uh, related. So as we want to understand a bit the, how our model was fitted to, to find clinically useful relationships, um, we, we first see that there is this uh, global bias around the fact that, of course, we selected our corpus to be suicide relevant, but there is also scientific publication bias uh, in, because a lot of uh, terms will come come back, such as significantly associated with. And so when we query uh, using single words, we want to be able to find sets of words that don't always return the same uh, bias word towards which the corpus uh, is oriented. So because we want to find 
sort of a, a diverse set of words that will be useful clinically. And so we can guide this discovery by thinking about what we're thinking we will find. So for example, medication, we would like to know uh, what kind of medications are used. Uh, and so for that, the, the most related are psychotropic, antidepressant, antipsychotic. And also interestingly, pesticide appears. So this makes us understand that there's a bidirectional valence, meaning that it can be positive or negative. It can be uh, towards the medication side or sort of anti-medication. Uh, pesticide is used rather as a suicide mean in uh, developing countries. We're still at F of five, halfway through. So another, uh, another set of words we're expecting to find, therapies. We have CBT, DBT, cognitive behavior therapy, dialectical behavior. And it also shows ART, uh, which after exploration really refers both to art therapy and to antiretroviral therapy. So this shows the difficulty of uh, NLP, natural language processing, because words can have ambiguous meanings. So the key, the key point I want you to take out of this talk is about the vector operations. And so if you already heard a bit about word to vec you maybe know the classic examples. There is a, the version with the king, the queen, and the man. But let's focus here on Paris minus France plus Germany. The idea is that since each word has a representation, so in our case, 100 vectors, 100, uh, yes, uh, a dimension, 100 embedding, each word is a vector of dimension 100. Uh, what we observe is that if we do Paris minus France plus Germany, so this is on general corpora. The word with highest similarity will be Berlin. So it's uh, interesting because the, uh, the algorithm successfully understood the relationships between these different concepts. But as I was digging a bit into this example, uh, some, some talks or, or presentations around it were saying that um, also, uh, in the nearest neighbors, there can be other capitals, such as Moscow, et cetera. And so the, it's not only we get Berlin, it's especially that we are in a capitals subspace. And I thought that this would maybe be better to use in my uh, exploration. So I tried to build up a similar query. And one idea I had was since PTSD is mostly associated with military veterans, even though it can be also applied to survivors of abuse, uh, but uh, overall still significantly uh, associated with military veterans. And this, uh, there's this psychiatrist author, Bruno Bettelheim, that talked a bit about PTSD and ASD and autism spectrum disorder and autism in itself. So that's a bit how I got the idea of, well, maybe uh, veterans, the link between veterans and PTSD is similar to the link between children and autism. So I know it's uh, maybe a bit crude, but the, um, we could argue that some symptoms uh, are similar. And the, the results were quite good. The, if we do, for example, veterans minus PTSD plus ASD, we have these results on the right side. And what we see is that it's mostly socioeconomic terms. We'll have geographic terms, Iranian, Swedish, we'll have um, rural, indig indigenous, 
so more sort of geographic. Uh, we'll have also professionals, sort of occupation related, children, adults, age related. So for me, this is an ev evidence of a social economic subspace of words. And we can revert it. PTSD minus veterans plus children. And here we have mostly psychiatric diagnosis. We'll have PTSD, well, this was in our, our terms, but anxiety, psychotic, EPD or bipolar. And so I think that this shows the evidence of the psychiatric diagnosis subspace. Okay, so our glove fit has finished now. So we can, so the, I didn't introduce it, but the NLP embeds is a package I'm currently working on uh, that's available on GitLab, but uh, that there's no vignette yet. Uh, so it's very early version, but uh, it will be expanded upon in the few months, in the next months. So we can do these operations. What I previously showed was the shiny app I developed uh, that was calling this function. So here are what here is what I was saying about the, the bias words, uh, beginning of exploration. This is a therapy query, medication query. So here I was starting to introduce uh, the fact that we can do vector operations, but that they weren't very uh, powerful. And uh, here I was starting to talk about the concepts of spaces. And so now we match back to where we were in the slides. Here we come back a bit on other vector operations I tried uh, because ultimately one of our key goal is to understand what uh, people suffering from suicidal ideation, uh, if we could find predictors on how, if they will, when they will uh, attempt. And so this is some of, some of my exploration to try to find what differentiates ideation and attempts. And we can see EI, emotional intelligence. So this loops back to my first example. That is why I was showing it. And I think it's uh, probably an important concept, uh, even though it's kind of a not very well defined term. Um, I think it uh, conveys. Uh, Convey some meaning. Here, there's the uh, reverted. We can see that it's very different. So we need to explain a bit why. So once we perform this exploration, uh, another subspace that seemed to be uh, exhibited was a childhood adversity subspace uh, linked to abuse, maltreatment. And a few terms I thought were quite important, but I couldn't really show evidence of a subspace. Are medical symptoms related? There was, for example, tinnitus, uh, a few terms like these. And one of my well, uh, another thing I saw was, so neuroticism appeared when we queried schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive with autism. And so these, the first ones are more personality traits. And I was wondering if we can discover similar relationships uh, for suicidal behavior, PTSD, This is a clo 
more or less related research where the authors try to do subtypes of obsessive compulsive disorder and they first cluster on one scale map it to a second scale after but this concludes a bit the exploration part and so now we want to try the the confirmation because maybe the the queries we entered don't really reflect the overall structure uh, maybe we were just saying uh, sort of a cognitive bias uh, guiding us towards a bit what we already know and so this is when i wanted to try to um, make make the process more automatic of discovering these uh, groups of words and i also wanted to see how they interrelate for example we saw that there was the therapies the medications is there one that is closer to one diagnose or and so how they connect so for that i thought about using density based clustering and so we can't use it on the our whole 30,000 words and uh, so what I saw of doing is we first build up uh, a list of clinically relevant terms. We build this list using the exploration we perform. So we have 23 operations and each one will return 50 uh, most closest words. So some words will be duplicated and the unique words amounts to 800. So we have our matrix of 800 words by 100 dimensions, and we perform density-based clustering on that. So I wanted to introduce a bit the density-based clustering method um, where Time is a bit short, but uh, here we have the example. Sorry for the negative view. Um, okay, so for example, in density-based clustering, we can detect forms like this in our in our data set. And so this is using dbscan. We put a, a threshold on the density. But one of the limitations of dbscan is when you have, for example, two clouds of words, but in one cloud, there are sub clouds. And so either you put uh, a threshold that will detect the two large clouds, either the two small, but you can't understand uh, both. So this is where optics comes to play. This is the reachability plot from optics. Like I don't have the time to explain all the details, but basically here we can, uh, using this reachability plot, the valleys show the clusters. And so here we can say, this was our left cluster and here are our sub clusters that we previously couldn't find. And so this is optics. Um, and I, during my PhD, I developed optics KXI to be able to extract the clusters from the optics reachability plot. I believe HDB scan may be doing similar things. But so in my, in my optics KXI package, I provide some functions to be able to compare various parameters uh, we don't know the number of clusters we're looking for. So that's one of the things we compare. This is the results on the, the first example on the shapes. So here is uh, the example of the, the metrics that Optics KXI uses to be able to say, okay, this is the best model. The clustering is best like this. And uh, so on the left, we have the different types of models. 
uh, we had Manhattan distance. Xi3 is, uh, will determine the number of clusters. Points 20 is the density parameter. So this enables us to rank our models. And after that, we can show the optics reachability plots with our different clusterings and see how, and to be able to fine tune if we need, if we don't want to, if, for example, this one looks better or not. And last, we can come back to the original data, map the clusters, look at the discriminating features. So this is the introduction to optics. Coming back to our data set. So we first build up our list of words, as I was saying, approximately 800. These are all where we selected. We subset our data matrix. And here we call the optics KXI pipeline. So this package is on CRAN since a long time, uh, but I did add a uh, some new features. Uh, so a modified version, uh, I remove, sometimes it's best to not have huge clusters and also integrated cosine similarity. So these features, I will, I didn't up, uh, update the version on CRAN yet, but it's uh, in progress. So on this object, we can use the classic optics KXI functions as uh, shown in the vignette. I'm just going to show them quickly, just show that it works. Oh, the plot appears. Yeah, 25. So I guess we're nearing completion of this demo. Um, I'm going to just go quickly. Uh, So the next thing I want to talk about was nearest neighbors graph, because if we do a dimension reduction, classic PCA, ICA, TSNI, on this data, it will be very uh, overlapping, not very nice. We don't understand how the clusters interact. And so if we do a nearest neighbor graph, uh, we can split things up a bit better in my slides. Here is a huge graph with all the non-clustered words. This is the reachability plot. On the left, we have uh, the psychiatric diagnosis. Here we have the therapies, medications cluster. And the nearest neighbor graph look like this. Once we remove non-clustered words, we can simplify it again. So this enables us to explore. So I'm going to try to not uh, go up too much on the next presentation. I think I have five minutes left. So uh, one of the novel methodology is uh, random vector operations. I'm very sad to be not really able to talk more about it, but uh, maybe you'll see a publication coming up on it. Um, the idea is that we reuse the nice vector operations. We said uh, we said that it's better to do uh, like to find uh, subspaces. And basically, I determine this uh, based based on the cluster. I determine automatic vector operations. So I redo the list of words, and when we chain it up to ten passes, we find a cluster of serum related cytokines, proteins, neuroanatomical regions, and sleep-related clusters. So the key, the cool result is that we discovered clusters we didn't really think about in the first place. And so quickly, the last minutes, I want to talk about evaluation. The, so the, back to
<coughs> so how we're going to evaluate it is uh, using databases of known relationships between diseases uh, curated by clinicians. And one such uh, available, publicly available data set is PrimeKG. Uh, it's more bioinformatics focused rather than biomedical hospital, but uh, it, it enables us to do, uh, it's a good starting point. So the, the core elements will be in our original text data. We replace our text strings by the, the identifiers, uh, the identifiers that we have in our database. So saying uh, ID 12 is related to ID 13. It can be, for example, schizophrenia is a mental disorder. So it's relationships like this, like parent-child. We compute the word embeddings using the identifiers. And we try to predict the known pairs. We generate random null pairs to have uh, uh, false positives and AUC performance measures. And the cool thing is we using this, we determine a cosine similarity threshold at, for example, 5% false positive. And once we have this threshold, we can say that all the terms above the similarity are related. And with that, we can build up a knowledge graph. This is the last thing I want to show. The, so one of the one of my recent packages as graph. And uh, but I I just want to show the my first first results on K graph package. It will be This one is almost ready to be submitted. And this is the Shiny app that we're using at our lab. So we'll basically build us a knowledge graph like this. So and this is using the S-Graph package that you can already use with uh, on CRAN. It's a HTML widget. And so the knowledge graph will look something like this, putting related terms next to each other, the edges are proportional to their similarities. And so here we have a lot of, we, we tell what specific concept we want to learn about, and it shows all the related ones. And if we should put up several, we get the interactions between them. So I think this is my time. Um, Maybe as a conclusion. So we're now using. A, so yeah, one of the one of the results that come up is the importance of sleep. Um, we we shown some ways to integrate borderline clinically relevant concepts such as guilt, shame, and we put in evidence less well known psychiatric diagnosis. Uh, dissociation, but also medical concepts, uh, amusia, anhedonia. And now we're using it as input for our other projects. We basically have a set of 5,000 words, suicide related, that we will use on our AHR data analysis. Um, and <clears throat> we are starting to use LLM pre-trained models, and we will try to compare them. So thanks a lot. Thank you. That was a lovely presentation. Um, our, our next speaker had to cancel, so we are going to have a gap of an hour before the, uh, the talk on logistic regression um, and semantic search, uh, which will be happening at 5.30. But seeing as there's a gap, let me throw a question at you. Um, yeah. I do work on addiction, and I love everything that you just showed. So I would like to take the methods that you're, you've shown and apply them to the notes that are in our EMR. 
So I'd like to take the clinical notes for people who are coming in um, either with an addiction diagnosis or potentially with an addiction diagnosis and try and understand what's going on um, in the word space. What I'm worried about is I have clinicians and so I have clustering. So in the work you're showing, you're you know pulling in data from many, many, many journals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how concerned would you be if there was clustering within the documents that you're trying this on? So do you mean because it's done by one, by several clinicians and that each clinician has his own handwriting or style of writing? Correct. Yeah. Correct. It'd be, it would be style. And also because this is addiction, um, I'd be concerned that there would be subtle words used that were clues um, to avoid um, explicitly saying this person is using cocaine. But let's say there's 20 clinicians in the clinic. Um, each one might have their own slang for hiding cocaine um, or hi hiding cocaine use in yeah. patients. And any thoughts on just how badly that would mess with your methods? Um, it's quite a hard question. Um, yeah. uh, and we, I just started on the EHR data analysis. So I don't have too much experience yet on this. Uh, in suicide, we also have similar problems because the, the clinician will basically, like you said, avoid saying it explicitly. So it, we will face similar problematics, but I didn't really uh, think about ways. Um, I, that's the, the embedding is what we're trying to, uh, I guess the embedding should, should make it work because uh, we, we we find relevant terms, so we'll need to to build up a bit of a, on it. But I think the embeddings is uh, is the good way forward for such uh, uh, slang or um, it's not even slang; it's like really trying not to be explicit. But uh, right. So I I, I don't have any any particular uh, answer, but I think that embedding is definitely the way forward. Thank you. Th it's a great answer. I knew it was an impossible question. Um, I look forward to seeing what happens when you start to use these techniques within the EMRs, again, because I, I really wonder what's going to happen as a function of the number of clinicians. Um, so lovely presentation, super valuable. Thanks a lot. So if uh, other people have questions, I have some time. I see one question in the chat. Are you able to see the chat? Yes, I see it. And so for beginners, I would suggest the text to vec vignette. So there are two. Um, there one where first talks a bit about text processing and one that focuses on glove word embeddings. So is this, uh, you can start understanding how text2vec works, uh, the tokenizer, uh, the different parameters, creating the voc vocabulary. Uh, you will also have the parameters such as minimum frequency. So in this vignette, it talks a bit about how you build up your vocabulary. It also, here it shows using lasso, but it's uh, sort of a prediction uh, use case. And after that, you can go up to word to vec, the word to vec vignette. He 
here talks about the term co-occurrence. The skip grams window parameter will be the, as you move on on your character vector, uh, the skip gram window is the number of words in front and before you're looking at. So it's your word window. And so it's when words appear in this window that they are correlated. And word to vec basically makes this window slide and will tell you, oh, these two words appeared very frequently together in your window. So this parameter is quite important. Here we have the classic example of how you call the global vector and this is the fit. So here is the, the messages that you saw in my presentation. And basically my function wraps also these and I just returned this object. And after he performs the word vectors, Similarly, as what I was doing, here is the sim2 uh, function for cosine similarity. And I also integrated the ability to do subtractions. So yeah, he talks about, about Paris, France, and Germany also. I found a very, very nice presentation that talked uh, about this capitals subspace, but I couldn't find it again. So maybe if anyone knows about it, you can put it in the chat. But uh, I'll or I'll try to put it in my upcoming R packages. Well, thank you so much. If there aren't other questions, I think we can end here. That was a great demo. Thanks.